do. Um, you had to think about it in order to make plans so that you can make that drive and take that day. You probably don't want to get an abortion, turn around and drive back home again. That same, you probably want a little time after, before you make that drive back, unless you have somebody to help you. <coughs> sometimes they don't. But sometimes you're talking about somebody taking a full week off of work to come up, see the position, wait the three days, think about it by themselves because they're too far from home to run back and forth because we simply don't have providers in this state. Because the, apparently enough people in this state don't want to provide that. It's a cons U.S. constitutional right to have an abortion if you so choose. The beginning of life varies depending upon one's beliefs. Some believe it's a conception. Yeah, Some believe the con by the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, apparently it's at the end of the um, second trimester. Um, some religions believe it's when the babies take the first breath. And until then, they don't feel that it's a person. And I think we need to respect all of those religions. And in your 72 hours, my question is, does everybody have to feel the same as you, or can we all be independent individuals and follow the Constitution as it is written? I, I think 72 hours is not a lot to ask for the ending of a beating heart. It may be a little inconvenient, and it may be a lot of different things, but you're committing a murder. And if you're going to wait two more days to do that, that's something that you, you should take into consideration. If you want to get the DVD, or if you want to get the picture of it, but make an informed decision. This just gives people an opportunity to increase their information about it. This is life changing for both the mother and the child. Yes, so two more days, I don't think is much of a hardship or an inconvenience to think about what you're doing. You're a single woman and you have no vacation and you have no sick leave and oftentimes no insurance, how can you take a week off of work? What do you do about, you know, the rest of your life? I mean, I think that's very hard. And I had a child when I was considerably older. The one thing you children, can adopt, and people can adopt was, too. A lot of, a lot of it's very, facilities will help people. you looked at adoption? Pardon me? If you looked at adoption, it's really tough. I've not um, gone through one. Well, it's, um, <coughs> Some babies are more available than others, and some well, at least they're available. Yeah, they would be some, available. Some people don't want those babies. <coughs> anyway, uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch, we're asking people who have known they've been pregnant for a while. You're dealing with a very tough decision. You're going to think about it as soon as you have the first suspicion, suspicion that you're pregnant, because <coughs> that's what women do. They really think about, oh my gosh, I think I'm pregnant. What if I have, and away the story goes, you know, all these different scenarios fly through the head. That is and not mutually exclusive to females. I mean, well, no. gentlemen do the they same thing they talk about. I mean, right. something happens. They find they're going to be a father. Yeah. And I, I, I really, you know, when I was going through uh, weight life pregnancy, we'll call it, um, I was asked the question, can you make the decision? if there is something wrong with this child, if there is a problem for this, for this fetus. And I said, I don't know. And the doctor looked at me and he said, well, why are we doing this test? And I said, so I can learn whether or not I need to make a decision. And I had thought about that for a long time before I even went for the test, knowing full well that that baby was very wanted and thinking, if I have to, if there's something terribly wrong with this child because of the age situation, um, would I be able to do that? And that was about all I thought about since I found out that there was a possible situation. So I'm sure that any woman who is in a situation where she suddenly it dawns on her this child may not be in her best interest or the best interest of her family, she's going to think about it. And it's going to be a lot longer than 72 hours. It's going to be more like weeks. So I don't know that we need to legislate. So another two days is a hardship for ending a life? 
if you've made your, if you've been thinking about it for a couple of weeks and you've made your decision and you drive five and a half hours because that's the only facility available, making somebody wait a little longer is almost like punishment. I don't almost see it that punishment. way. I see it as I know. taking two more days well, to then, think about what you're doing before you commit murder. I think that's fine. If you have a family member or a friend and you want to advise them to do that, I think that's great because that's how you feel. But if somebody's been thinking about this for a week or two and trying to get to a facility to find out exactly more about the procedure and, and so forth, I mean, they know that they cannot have this child in their particular situation, to, to punish them. And killing someone, not wrong. punishing them? Well, I think there's any punishment out there that's going to come on them and it's their decision. And I don't know that that's up to us. That's not a decision for a governing, for us to make. I don't want to make that decision for any woman. And if I tell them, you know, you have to wait this long, I think I'm being grossly unfair and I think I'm being, um, <coughs> well, I'm not giving them credit for being able to think for themselves and having a brain. And that's just the way I feel. And I respect how you feel and I hope you respect the way I feel. I do. We have to agree to disagree on this. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Romley. <laughs> um, talking, talking. Afternoon. Afternoon. Um, I want to thank you for this legislation. Thank you. Um, I think it's really good, and um, <coughs> you know, um, I've heard you uh, say different times about coming to end of being alive, and you know, I've I've told that story here not too long ago uh, that uh, about this woman that called called me been in ministry for a number of years, and the pain and anguish she was going through after she had an abortion. That couldn't have She she made. She, she talked to me, um, I'll just tell you, if she would have had this, in the, you know, she had this time to think about it, I honestly believe we'd have another life. She would have a child. We talked about punishment. Uh, she's went through quite a lot yeah. uh, after that time and, and sought counseling for many, many months. And she still regrets that decision that she made many years ago. And she wonders, who did I abort? Was it a boy, was it a girl? And now we, we can talk about policy, we can talk about all this other stuff, but I, I just want to thank you for making this legislation. I think it, moving into 72 hours to make this huge decision is, is a great thing, and I think it will uh, save lives and cause uh, women to uh, you know, have have a longer time to think about ending that life. So thank you for bringing it. I'll be in support. Thanks, sir. Representative Bryant. To acquire the procedure. Gentlemen, I'd just like to thank you for bringing this. Uh, thank you. You know, I, I, I listened to the comments and things, and, and you know, hearing the Constitution thrown in, in the, this discussion, and, and that kind of throws me off of the fact that the Constitution is to protect our individual rights and freedoms, and we have certain unalienable rights, and one is life, you know, and, and if we look at the medically accurate information, you know, life begins at conception by scientific fact. It's not by what you feel. And, and just to, by, with your bill, allowing that person to realize the, the gravity of the situation, to make them stop and think for a second about what uh, they may do or may not do, I think is, is a good policy. Uh, I myself, with uh, my fifth child on the way, uh, just have seen the, the growth of, of my, my child in, in the womb, you know, of seeing the ultrasound and seeing that life growing these past nine months, about to have uh, here in just a couple weeks. And to sit there and look at that, that child, a 3D sonogram, and say that that's not a life is absolutely mind blowing to me. And this was within just a couple months, you could see the form of a face, a human being. And, and I see our culture moving 
to saying that this is not a life. This is my choice. No, this is disposable. This is not disposable. This is a life. Right. You have been charged with protecting a child, not with ending that child's life. And I think by allowing legislation like this to pass through and allowing people to see what it is and the reality of what they have inside them may uh, may make them have uh, a second thought to, to making a right to say that. So, uh, gentlemen, I just I want to thank you for this, and uh, and I, I hope this charges fully through this House and the uh, Senate and everything. So thank you. Thank you. Further questions? The bill sponsor or representative? Proceed. Yeah, no, sorry. Um, to inquire. Thank you. Um, Hello. Hi. I just also want to thank you for this bill. I'd like to say I'm the youngest of 11 children, oh and I'm 61, so you can see how old everybody is in my family. But um, I often hear stories from my older brothers and sisters about when they found out that my mother was going to have me, and a lot of them cried. My dad worked in the mines. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't own a car. And um, uh, a lot of them cried because they didn't know how they were going to afford to feed me. <laughs> and of course, my mother cho chose to have me, and I, she wouldn't have done it any other way. And I, I'm against abortion because I think, you know, if she would have awarded me, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And I feel like I've been a productive citizen in society. I taught school for 32 years, and, and uh, I'm representing people in my district and my state. And uh, we just, life is precious. And anything that we can do to prevent an abortion, I support. So thank you, Representative for your time that you have spent uh, working on this bill. Thank you. Are the questions of the sponsor? Representative Monticello. Fire, please, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative, I'd like to ask you, do you feel like we have a responsibility as a society, society to take care for these children once they are here? That doesn't have anything to do with the bill. I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking you, do you feel as a society we have a responsibility to care for these children here, or do we just have a responsibility to make sure they get here? That doesn't have anything to do with this bill. So you're refusing to answer my question, because I've seen time and time again in this committee and on the floor, when, when members have had an opportunity to stand up and take votes that would protect children when they were here to keep them safe, they vote against those measures. So I'm having a hard time with this conflict of interest here where we were going to fight for these lives and life is so valuable, life is so precious, but when we have an opportunity to protect life once it's here, um, the votes are absent. People take a walk on those things. They're not there to stand up for the children are there. So I'm going to ask you one more time, and I would hope that you would have the integrity to answer this question. Do you feel as a society we have a responsibility to care for these children once they're here? We're here to talk about House Committee yeah. Substitute for House Bill 1613, <laughs> increasing the opportunity for a woman. Okay, so we want to increase the opportunities. Let's say I have cancer and I am suffering for cancer and I make a personal decision that I'm not going to pursue any treatment. Should I be forced for 72 hours? Should I be forced to go and look at um, images and videos of people taking their last, last breaths? Should I have to look at every outcome that could possibly ha happen? Because perhaps that is a decision that you might not choose to make. But where do we draw the line with this? You know, we all talk, we talk about frequently about government stay out of our lives and stay out of our business and personal choices, but here we are completely intruding in a woman's life and the choices that she makes. So where do we draw the line with this? 72 hours. So should I have to wait 72 hours with any medical procedure that I take? This I bill, to... House Committee Substitute for House Bill 1613, has to do with one thing actually giving information and increasing the timeline from 24 hours to 72. 
doesn't have to do with about buying a car, doesn't have to do about deciding what You to brought do. up the buying the car, and we are also, I mean, it's interesting because I've been looking not, at not some amendments, um, and I'm looking at amendments, a lot of this have nothing to do with 72 hours that are sitting before us that have anything to do with the bill. I'm looking at your substitute, which really, I still believe there are procedural problems here because when I look at your original bill, it's much different than what we have here. So you kind of opened up that can of worms to have discussions on other, on other issues, but, um, I think it's important, an important point to make that we have a responsibility to care for, for folks that are here. And I, I, while I respect your opinion and I respect your views, I don't feel that I get the same respect back. And it's a little hard, though, when you talk about life and how valuable and we have all these um, inflammatory comments that are being thrown around. But yet when you have an opportunity or we have an opportunity on the floor to vote and make decisions that will actually help children that are here, the votes aren't there. And you can't answer that question. You can't. You are. You are unwilling to answer my question. Do you feel we have a responsibility to care for children? I, and clearly, you you you've stated. Here, talked about House Bill sixteen thirteen, the House you, Committee. So but you talked about how you have you have an obligation, and you feel it's important to protect unborn life. What about born life? Why is that not as important to you? I didn't say that it. Well, you won't answer my question. I'm here. It's a simple. It's House a simple Committee question. Substitute for House Bill 1613. Well, it's a simple question. Thank you. All right. Are questions of bill sponsor? All right, we may need to call the Guinness Book of World Records, you know, and I think we probably set a record on uh, inquiry or questions of a sponsor before we move on to witnesses, but, you know, Nobody I'll else. come in. So, uh, are there those wishing to testify in favor of the bill? Uh, <coughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. For the record, Susan Klein, representing Missouri Right to Life, here to go on record in support of House Committee Sub House Bill 1613. Uh, I want to thank Representative Gatchenberger for bringing this bill forward. I, as a woman, am not offended by this bill. Um, this is not a punishment. This legislation is simply about giving women time to <laughs> contemplate a serious decision that is going to affect them the rest of their life. Uh, they're going to be offered the opportunity to, to get a picture of their baby. Uh, where they put it is not the, the, the matter of the bill, but it's a picture of the baby that they can take home and show their family and, and, and see that it is not just a mass of cells. It is a baby, has body parts, uh, and, and, uh, and, and be excited about what is to come into their lives. Uh, it increases the reflection period from 24 to 72 hours. Uh, and three days waiting to make a decision. We all make decisions on different kinds of surgeries that we've waited longer than three days on uh, to actually go back and do a, a different kind of the surgery. Uh, watching a video or, or taking it with her uh, she has the opportunity to take that with her and look at it whenever she has more time to think about it by herself. Uh, and, and thinking about things by yourself is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so I'm not offended by this bill. Uh, abortion is not a constitutional right. It was decided by the court. And another thing that the court decided was the opportunity for women to have information presented to them. Uh, and uh, the joint opinion of Justices O'Connor, a woman, a Kennedy, and Souter, uh, in the Casey case said that, in a, and this is their a quote from their decision, in attempting to ensure that a woman apprehend the full consequences of her decision, the state furthers the legitimate purpose of reducing the risk that a woman may elect an abortion only to discover later with devastating psychological consequences that her decision was not fully informed. Full, so full informed consent has been upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, which, uh, by the way, ultimately just five people on that court decided that abortion uh, would be an opportunity for women. Um, so it's not a constitutional right. Uh, anyway, the court has said that informed consent is a legitimate thing for the state to get involved in. And uh, I think it's an opportunity, once again, to make sure that women have full, complete information uh, before they make a decision that is going to be life-changing for them, for their future, uh, things that they may not understand right now, but will have the opportunity to understand later. Uh, and it is going to, end, going to end the life of that unborn child that they're carrying in their womb. 
So three days to wait uh, and think about it is not that much. In terms of the uh, context of you know having a, a pro-life supermajority in both the House and the Senate here in Missouri, um, are there other states that have adopted 72-hour waits comparative to the 24 we currently have in the statute here? There are two, um, at least two states. Okay. Uh, do you know which ones those are? Um, I don't have those in front of me. Uh, South Dakota and Utah. Utah. And uh, do you know approximately how many states have 24-hour waits on the books? Oh, my goodness. Um, Probably dozens. Of yeah, years. dozens. Yeah. Yes, and they've been upheld. Very good. Um, you know, looking at the sub versus the underlying bill, <coughs> I noticed that the underlying bill would have created a new section 090, but that the sub actually is just really looks like minor changes to section 027 and 039. 039 already dealing with 24 hour uh, wait period and changing that, removing you know the 24 in brackets and replacing it with 72. And then there's some minimal language changes beyond what's currently in statute. What's striking is as I scroll through section or chapter 188 uh, on provisions regarding restriction of abortions, um, you've got dozens and dozens of sections in statute. Um, are you familiar with kind of the, the history of section or chapter 188 when it started and, and, and where it's been built upon along the line. Are we talking about a 20 or 30 year history here? And specifically, are you familiar with the history of the 24 hour wait as to when that would have been enacted? Uh, the 24 hour waiting period was enacted originally in 2003 and uh, was vetoed and was overridden. Uh, Governor Hol uh, the legislative body overrode uh, Governor Holden's veto of that bill. And it was updated uh, to include more information in 2010. Um, and, and I mean, we've been dealing with, uh, with issues. There's multiple uh, pieces of legislation that this legislative body has passed over these 41 years of, of abortion. And uh, so they've been dealing with it ever since it came to be that the courts um, were deceived actually in the information that whenever the Roe uh, versus Wade decision was made. Norma McCorvey, who was the plaintiff in that case, came out and said that she had been deceived and wished that she had never been a part of that case. So from that day forward, the legislative bodies across the United States, and, and I'm specifically in Missouri, have been dealing with issues on how to protect innocent human life from being taken. Okay, very good. You know, we've only got about 35 minutes left before we have to be back on the floor. I, I might just take a time out. Could those wishing to testify in favor of the bill raise their hands? All right, uh, those wishing to testify in opposition to the bill, could you raise your hands? All right, let's, uh, let's allow maybe another five minutes uh, to uh, those in favor, and then we'll leave the balance of the time to those in opposition, because um, I only saw Sam and maybe one other hand. So. Uh, are there any other questions of the witness? Uh, Representative Chu. Just inquire briefly. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, quick question. Does anything in the law currently preclude a woman for, from waiting 72 hours or for whatever amount of time she feels is necessary uh, once she enters Planned Parenthood between that time and, and making her decision? It does not preclude her right now, but this gives her the opportunity for to be sure that she gets that 72 hours. Very good, thank you. Uh, for, for those wishing to testify in favor of the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, Samuel Lee with Campaign Life Missouri to go on record in support of uh, this House Committee substitute for House Bill 1613. And again, also want to thank uh, Representative Gatchenberger for, uh, for filing this bill. Uh, this bill, if you look at this bill and compare it to the bill that has already been third read by the House, and that was Representative Elmer and Representative Fredericks, House Committee substitute for House Bills 1307 and 1313, probably 95% of the language, if not more, is exactly the same. Uh, the difference being that uh, this adds a provision to what is currently in the law and what was in that bill 
the current provision being that the woman has to be offered an opportunity to view an ultrasound. That's been in the law since 2010. All this adds to that is that she also be given the opportunity to receive a photograph. And we're just not talking about at the abortion clinic. The current law uh, allows for her to, to be referred to another location. It could be a pregnancy resource center. It could be a hospital. It could be a private doctor's office. It could be somewhere else where ultrasound is available. In fact, the Department of Health and Senior Services maintains a list of places where these ultrasounds are available. So those places would also now, under the law, be required to offer her the opportunity to uh, receive a photo in addition to the current opportunity to <coughs> uh, The second thing, uh, if you recall, Representative Linda Black uh, on the floor offered an amendment which was overwhelmingly adopted by the House uh, that requires this, uh, this video be prepared by the Department of Health and Senior Services. The only difference between this bill and what has already been third read by the House is that the department, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, optional for her to view. Uh, and that the department shall make copies of that on CD or DVD, uh, would provide them free of charge to the abortion facility or the hospital, and in turn, if she wants a copy, they have to provide that free of charge to the woman. Um, what's interesting is that there are a handful of states that require that a woman be offered not only the ultrasound, but also a photo of her unborn child. Uh, one of those states is Kansas. And they passed a bill in 2009 which had a number of provisions, informed consent provisions. But one of those is, and I'll read it directly, uh, the physician shall offer, quote, the woman the opportunity to view the ultrasound image and receive a physical picture of the ultrasound image. Uh, that bill was signed into law by then Democratic Governor uh, Kathleen Sebelius right before she was appointed to uh, health and human services. Um, of all the bills that she vetoed, she vetoed, I think, essentially every pro life bill. That was the one bill that she signed into law. Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, just looking at the sub, I know you're pretty familiar with this. Again, this, this looks like it, 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 it encapsulates the bulk of language that's already in section 027 and 039. Is that yes. correct? Yes, it, yes, it does. Look and then the underlying sections, I guess, my only question was on page um, near the end uh, page 12 section 13 the department producing this video Correct. that would be made available I mean our departments were liable to, to you know produce a video that's going to be in compliance with the law and accurate and not slanted I mean they're, they're doing that now with the pamphlet. There's an informed consent pamphlet. It's a multi-page, 20-some-odd-page pamphlet that since 2010, they've been producing and providing free of charge to uh, doctors and abortion clinics. So they'd be charged. And this is adapted, again, from Representative Linda Black's <coughs> amendment. This is adapted from that, uh, with the addition that they'll make extra copies. So instead of just making one copy for each abortion facility or hospital, they'll make multiple copies. Uh, and they are, I mean, I presume that our state agencies are going to be uh, providing accurate medical information that will be unbiased. Uh, <coughs> this isn't going to be produced by National Right to Life Committee or by Planned Parenthood for that matter. And, and on lines, uh, page 12 again, just below that section, lines 16 through 23, is that section entirely stricken? Yes, and, and let me explain that, Mr. Chairman. Um, this section 18.039 uh, was uh, first, in, uh, well, it was enacted back in the early 70s, but was last repealed and reenacted in 2010. In 2011, the legislature passed another bill, pro-life bill, that among other provisions, modified in section 188.015, the definition of medical emergency. And that section applies to the whole chapter 188. So it, this current language is redundant and inconsistent with a definition that applies to the whole chapter. That's why it's being removed from here. It's, it's not removing a medical emergency, it's just making the definitions consistent in the law. Very good, thank you. Questions of the witness, Representative Mary. Question to the Proceed. I have just one tiny question. Sure. When does the clock start? I'm sorry? When does the clock start? 
72 hour clock. When does it begin? When she, she would, finds when, out she's pregnant after she sees somebody, when does it begin? When she would go in for her informed consent counseling. And what's interesting is that the practice here in Missouri, based on some uh, testimony in the Senate, is that uh, the specific testimony was that a woman in Springfield, Missouri, can, can and does go into the Planned Parenthood in Springfield, Missouri, which is part of the Planned Parenthood of St. Louis and Southwest Missouri. And she can get, and the testimony was that she can and does get her informed consent information there, and then would travel so to St. Louis. Start the clock. When she goes in, whatever time that is, from the current law is 24 hours from that point onward, and the new law would be from 72 hours.